curious to why this particular platform and kind of the kit on it was the recommendation. Why this one? In my opinion, I mean, take it for what it's worth, but this bike out of the box is a very, very capable bike. Oh man, mold. You wanna open it? Yeah, let's do it. Howler monkey. That. Woo. that black. Uh, yeah, I don't want to touch it. because I... <laughs> Oh God, no! This one's yours? Yeah. yeah. This one? Yeah. Oh man. So, um, Kyle 2, um, K2. Tell me all red. <laughs> you, so you, you, uh, rent these now as a part of the tour thing in Kalispell, right? Yeah. So I, wintertime doing the snow bike thing, summertime keeping with the theme of motorcycles and everything. Four of these, uh, Tenere 700 dual sport bikes, rentals and tours. Clay, you got any experience on these bikes overseas and and driving them on your expeditions. Did you guys do any of these yet? That's the area that I am looking forward to the most in developing my skill sets in. But yeah. uh, we have around the US, but not internationally. That's perfect. Because maybe we could prompt you to do a Phil Craft X Overland deal or X Overland Phil Craft deal where we do all bike thing. Don't tempt me with a good time. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be cool to do something like that. I know uh, we got Coop here Coop would be somebody I consider a, a subject matter expert as far as how many miles he puts on him, how long he's been doing it. How, how long have you been doing this? Uh, since about 2004. Yeah. Well, 2005 when I got home from Iraq, I just I needed I needed an outlet, and I found off-road motorcycling to be the thing for me. Yeah. To unwind. Yeah, and that's that's how you get involved with the veteran program. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What, what's the name of that program, and and what is? It's uh, veteran veterans back 40 adventure, and basically we take veterans on either one day to multi day. Uh, motorcycle trips includes camping, off-roading, and mainly just building the camaraderie and uh, letting guys get off the couch and get outside and, you know, a little bit of throttle therapy. Yeah, part, part of this thing, guys, is like, Clay's like the Overland OG. And it, like, he, he's the guy who knows how to you know, plan, execute these epic adventures. When you take a guy like that, you take kind of subject matter experts who do specific things in mobility. And then you got like Mike Hernandez, who's a behavioral health specialist, who's, you know, been adopting troubled youth since, I mean, his whole entire life, his career. And he's transitioning into something like this. And we think about the veteran advocacy and then the adventure and all that stuff. It's kind of a perfect collaboration of minds and ideas to do some rad stuff for people. I kind of want to ask you guys' opinions because I have the opportunity with so many experts here. What would be the ideal setup for bugging out in your opinion? And I want to start off with uh, the dual sport since it's in front of us. Let's start with uh, Kyle. What is your reasoning why the dual sport would be a perfect platform for bugging out? Let's say from an urban to rural or bad to good. For me, you know, especially here in Montana, Everything's a long ways away. So being able to hop on one of these and go 200 to 300 miles, I mean, I only need to go 30 to 45 minutes to be in the mountains and I can get there way faster on this bike and into a lot more gnarly stuff than I ever could on a Jeep or a truck or anything. So if you want to get out somewhere fast and efficient and away from everybody else, I don't know another better platform to do this besides a helicopter. Clay, you grew up in Montana. Yep. Just like uh, Kyle did. What would you recommend for somebody who's looking at it like a recreational perspective, which you do, but also a potential bug out platform, which is the benefit of it. Well, when I got into my motorcycle, I, I had bug out considerations. Yeah. Uh, I'm on the lighter end. So for me, being able to carry all the gear that you need to live off of it, plus having enough range, because depending on the situation of a bug out situation, fuel is always going to be a consideration. So being able to carry more than less, or at least having efficiency to give you range that's effective. Yeah. You don't want to be like refueling all the time. I think that motorcycles in general, they're an essential skill to have no matter where you live in the world. Because wherever you go in the world, motorcycles are utilized. Oh yeah, good point. So I grew up on a little bike. My boys have grown up on a little bike just to give them the foundations so that when they get older and travel the world, they can get on anything and get out of the way or, or get out of town if they've got to get out of country, whatever it is. So that's on the forefront of your mind. Recreation is just a proxy benefit. 
Yeah. Well, and then you you recreate to get good at it. Yeah. And that's the fun part. Yeah. You know, now you go rip around and and if something were to go down, you've been having fun with it and you know how to do it. I mean, it's like everywhere you go in the world, a bike is almost the primary means of transportation because they're world countries. A lot of people can't afford them. Cheaper gas. They're, they're durable, reliable, it gets you where you're going. Mikey Hernandez, uh, he's the kit ho of Philcraft. He just loves kit, man, he just can't get enough. He's like, oh, I'm working this deal, we're talking to these people. Uh, he loves it, um, but it's also cool because we got somebody who's um, kind of R&D and kit for us. When you look at this rig, your own experience, kind of as a novice rider, you kind of grew up like me, dicking around but not had formal training in it what are some pieces of equipment that have really helped you establish yourself on the bike well you need to carry gear right so you need some kind of pannier system uh so far in, in the beginning in my experience i really like the soft bags yeah just because you, you're going to lay this down a little bit more and you don't want you know to break your leg if you fall back or it hits so the hard bags are a little i don't know they're a little dangerous to me so i'm running a 40 liter and that has enough for like three days so anything over that, you can kind of you know space out and determine uh, your capability on time. Uh, after that, you just kind of check the boxes that we do with all of our mobility platforms for survival. Right? Food, water, shelter, comms, security, med, health. Well, you're wearing a rig right now that you have med and security on. Yeah. Wh who makes that? So this is from Wolf Enduro. Um, I like it because it keeps med on my person. We were talking about, and even with you, you know, Dakar. It always it blows my mind because in Dakar they're flying in a in a vehicle this style with a you know the the windscreen and they like stick their med kit behind the windscreen. I'm like, why would you do that? So you go sideways or you get ejected from your bike and your med kit's over there. It needs to be on your person. It needs yeah. to be on your person. Yeah. So when Good I point. was looking at med, like this was the first product that stuck out to me because I was like, oh, that's that's all right here. Curious to why this particular platform and kind of the kit on it was the recommendation. Why this one? So really, in my opinion, I mean, and take it for what it's worth, but this bike out of the box is a very, very capable bike to take it, you know, on miles and miles of highway or to do fire roads and even some two track and some light single track on. Um, the suspension is, is decent out of the box. I mean, you can always tune it if you need to, but um, it's got good ground clearance. And one of my favorite things about it, besides the fact that it's uh, fuel injected, it's really hard nowadays to find something, you know, for a bug out standpoint, I would honestly prefer to not have fuel injection. But um, other than that, it's, it's a very basic bike. I mean, you've got, you have a clutch cable instead of hydraulic, um, you know, take that for what it's worth, but it's the simplicity of it. There's not a whole bunch of electronics on it, like some of the newer bikes to where, you know, if you have an issue, you have to take it to a dealer to clear codes and whatnot. Um, Yamaha hit a home run with this, and I feel like uh, the, the, the frame and everything on it is just, it's, the ergonomics are great. Yeah, I appreciate you guys' expertise. We got more time to do a whole bunch of stuff. A lot of the links for these experts are down below. Make sure you stay tuned into those because if you're trying to go down this journey and path, let me just give you a word of advice because I've made the mistake as a baller rich contractor, which isn't really rich, but you think you're in the Thousand Air Club, like you're making some money. I got the Touratech catalog and bought everything in it. And as it showed up, I'm like, wow, that's garbage. I should have talked to an expert and like cut that in half. So I think, I think now it's time for a ride. One of the things that we want to do is kind of like get out in the back country with uh, Clay's expertise of the local area, understanding where to go. We kind of want to get a little miles on the dual sport, but also take these two strokes out and, and see how they perform and operate compared to this. And when you think about bugging out, especially urban to rural or vice versa, what's the best platform? I think it's gonna be fun to be able to test this, have a little bit of fun in the back country, especially when Mike Hernandez drops his bike and we run up with cameras and he's pinned underneath it and I have to rescue him by doing a, a 100 pound deadlift <laughs> with his bike. It's gonna be fun, we can't wait. What's up man, we're here, uh, uh, Greg from Little Belt Cattle Co is here and he's got his uh, food truck and I'm about to that truck up. I'm hungry, are we eating? Can we start running? Can, are we, can, we, can we start running? How are you doing? What's up, man? How are you? How's yeah. it going? Mike. What's up, man? How are you? Mike Glover. Nice, nice to meet, to meet you. you. Whew. How's it going? I'm starving. Good. Um, I haven't eaten 24 hours because I was thinking about your Because of meat. these burgers. Good. Your delicious Good. meat. Excellent. Well, listen, we've been ready. Guys, I'm out here in Montana in Bozeman with Greg and Tim from Little Belt Cattle Co. And I convinced him, I think, to make a podcast all on cattle ranching and farming, which I think he'd be primed for, but I just put that out there. But I'm breaking bread with these guys right now, eating their burgers. 
And I like the idea, I, I hate saying this idea because I know it's a thing that people do, but I don't know how many cattle ranchers I know that actually do a food truck in conjunction with uh, an outfit. Because it's not just about the meat, obviously, which is gonna be great. It's also about the education and community and bringing people together, right? I know, Tim, you, you founded um, Little Belt and you know Greg's doing the outside and you're taking a strategic view of kind of how this thing navigates. What do you kind of see as the future of this thing as it evolves and develops, especially with Little Belt? Well, the inspiration for this was uh, America's food supply chain. We all got a rude awakening two years ago that yep. uh, we take for granted bread on the shelf, food in the freezer. And the reality is that supply chain is a lot more fragile than we care to admit. Yeah. And uh, more importantly, it's become more concentrated and global than we care to admit. So it, it hit home for us to redirect some of our efforts towards actually creating a supply chain where we can have a cow on those mountains, graze in Montana grass, and get fed in Montana, processed in Montana, and consumed in Montana. And uh, that's really where it inspired us to try to create this farm to table uh, process. Never had chills over cattling before. <laughs> But that's exciting to hear, man, because look, I mean, look, I don't know what this is. We're special operations guys. We all have special operations backgrounds, like go into the world and, and try to do things. But the commonality I've seen across the board with these guys are they want to do better. They want to improve their fighting position. It's like always upgrading their circumstance and you know their route with whether it's a ranch or a business it's improving people's lives. And, and that idea to me is very inspiring, but also so necessary in these kind of times that we live in. So, but no, we appreciate you guys coming out. We appreciate all this stuff, you know, again, for us finding partners, <laughs> hey buddy, uh, that are working, you know, like-minded people doing, you know, like-minded things in different areas. So working with Fieldcraft has been amazing. And these guys are grabbing burgers before they go out and riding for the day in beautiful Montana. And we're happy to provide some power for you to get out there. I'm gonna do another burger. <laughs> I don't you know go. about you guys, but I'll do, an, I'll do another one. Thanks guys, I appreciate awesome, it so much. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Me and my girl, we do cardio. I bang like Mario, cause Jess likes the cardio. But that catch is party on, uh, I'm a Gemini. And she has a Scorpio. But that don't cross the minds where we on the cardio. Bet you on a peak, bet you on a seat. Clay ain't eating any dust up there, man. He's just free and clear. I'm loving it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. God, I'm old. It's, it's good. I mean, I don't know what to say. It's, I don't know anything. I'm not very technical. Coop would be the expert to talk to about like the diagnostics of like how things are tuned. I know we got to drop air. Um, he's saying it's a little running a little bit high. What was the PSI? Oh, we were at highway, like we were at like 38. So especially with these uh, Pirelli tires being like just the tires that come on the bike, we dropped it down to 25 in the front and 23 in the rear and it feels 10 times better. Yeah. I mean, this is like, this is like not ideal for like riding dual sport, but that's what you're going to run into. Like if you want to get access to like the beaten path, which is right here, you got to go through this stuff and it's a real nimble. It's, it's, a little top, it feels a little top heavy, like my KTM 1190, except you can move the bike where you need to. I never felt unsafe. I never felt, even when it was getting squirrely, I'm like throttle on, you know, it's like, it's like rally. Like the instinct is the lift, never lift, give it more throttle, get traction back. And it's kind of cool. Cause it, it, I feel more dialed because of rally. Cause I'm used to driving off road. And whenever I feel uh, the natural instinct to do things like lift or get off the throttle, I get on the throttle and um, just reposition myself. I, I loaded my foot pegs a little bit just to position the bike in certain places. I'm just getting used to it, but it's super fun. Like I'm sweating my balls off right now, but that's the fun of it. I would say there's a couple things that change immediately. The tires, I need new tires um, because I, even though this is like a 50-50 dual sport, I'm like a 70-30. I like to be off road more. 
Um, to be honest, like not that driving on road scares me, but man, I've been behind buddies who have been killed and died in my arms on motorcycles. And it's not myself I'm worried about. But I drive very defensive. It's other people, other people on the road. All right, so really just uh, first impressions on everything so far. Um, with the, the protection, obviously, Mike hasn't had a chance to test it out yet. But um, in my experience with the, the Outback Motor Tech on, on my bike, they're, they're the best in the business when it comes to strong protection. So that's why we went with that. Also with the skid plate, um, if you look at the specs, it's a lot thicker than what some of the other uh, companies are doing out there. It's aluminum. Um, another thing too about the crash bars, some companies use stainless steel, and that's awesome because you know nobody likes rust, right? But uh, when you're in the backcountry or you're in another country like you know Mexico or something like that, and you do have some kind of catastrophic failure, the nice thing about not using stainless is that you can weld it up. So um, if you need to have an actual you know roadside fix, um, it's totally doable with these bars versus something that's stainless steel. Um, also hooked us up with some of the pannier racks. The pannier racks here from Outback Motor Tech, the nice thing about those, they're super universal because uh, you can put any bag on there. You can do something like this motor track pannier from um, Giant Loop that just clips on. You can put regular panniers, you can do soft panniers, hard panniers. And um, they also use this like X system, which you can't really get much of a, uh, a view of it now, but there's a, a plate on the back side of here where you could put a roto packs on the inside to carry extra fuel for these bikes. Um, you also can do uh, extra water, uh, tools, anything that you want to be able to fill this void. Cause when you're using bikes like this and you have gear, you want to utilize as much space on the bike as possible. Cause you don't want to carry all that extra weight on your body. Um, and then something like this, keeping it low, it's gonna really help the bike um, function the way it's supposed to versus getting all the weight up high. Moving on to the bags again, uh, Giant Loop did the uh, Moto Trek panniers and the tank bag. They've been in the business for a really long time, um, super durable, and just want to thank those guys for for stepping up and and sending these bags to us to try out. Um, I've I've used the Moto Trek panniers and the Round the World panniers on, on my bikes for years, and I mean just beat them up, and they they've always lasted and super durable. So thanks to that, thanks to those guys for stepping up and doing that. All in all, like I said, this is kind of like the start of the build here. Um, kind of getting the essentials on and as we ride and uh, decide anything else that we want to do uh, we'll start adding some more parts on just to make it more bomb proof and um, be able to drive around the world. So oh, Kyle, uh, one of the things for us this year that we have coined need to operate the outdoors, right? And uh, I really wanted to highlight that on this trip and make that really what we're about, right? So why don't you tell me about your your like your mission statement and what is what is it all about? Right, so Veterans Back for, Back 40 is um, it's a 501c3 nonprofit, and what we do is we take veterans out on motorcycle and camping trips. And it's evolved. Uh, when we first started off, we were doing a lot of dirt bike stuff. The whole point is to get guys out of the house, off the couch, um, with like-minded people, you know, their, their brothers and sisters, and, and yeah, build the community back and, you know, help. We, we were really focused at first on really trying to, you know, help those guys who are dealing with both the physical and mental wounds of war. And right. um, the more and more we got into it, we realized like, hey, those guys who have, you know, those issues, also need to be with the guys who don't have those issues. Yeah. But now we really gear it towards adventure bikes. We take a guy out on a motorcycle, load him up with camping gear and say, hey, we're gonna go from point A to point B. Um, we're gonna use as much dirt as possible to get there. We're gonna yeah. camp along the way. And then after about day two or three, you really open up sitting around the campfire, mm. um, you know, and some guys hold some things in that they haven't talked about in a long time, right? So sitting around the campfire, it'll make people just kind of just just start talking about things that they need to get off their chest and yeah. um, it, it's just little stuff like that that I feel like um, you, you don't know how powerful it is until you experience it. It's true man you know there's there's a lot of cliche things that that we say but they hold true you know like we're, we're stronger together you know community is essential and Phil Cross Rival you know there's no 
uh, examples of long-term survival in history without that fundamental community piece, yeah. right? But that's why I really like what you do because you're hitting real therapeutic things, man. Mm -hmm. You know, with just simple tactics like just go camp. And, and don't get me wrong. I mean, there's nothing wrong with going and actually getting professional help because you know, we're not professionals by any means. Um, and I wish I had more time to even put into it. I since then have stepped back a little bit and now I just, I'm more of a volunteer role. Yeah. Man, that's, it, it helps me, you know, help, yeah, right? help me helping other people mm. and building that com camaraderie up. So how do we do that? How do we, where does, you know, somebody find you or get connected or do things or if they're a veteran? I mean, what's, what's, what's the way? Yeah. So, so veterans back 40, we usually put our calendar out around January and we go January to December. Okay. Um, we've done things with Kyle from Snowbike Nation last year doing some snow bike stuff. So we're really trying to broaden on what we do to get guys out. Cause not everybody wants to go and ride a dirt bike. Right. Yeah, yeah. But you know, it's, it's veterans back 40 adventure. That's all about adventure. Is that um, the website? Is it so a it's bb4080v.com okay. or .org, bb4080v.org. And uh, also hit us up on Instagram, Veterans Back 40 Adventure. Very cool. um, we also have Facebook um, and very small YouTube at this point, but I'm hoping to build that up a little bit more as well. Man, thank you so much for taking the time. I think uh, we're going to go get chow now. That sounds good to me. I appreciate it. This pizza is so good. <laughs> good job, Clay. You're welcome. Clay took us on a pretty epic adventure today. It, it was awesome. You guys are about to go on a pretty epic adventure. If you guys aren't following up X Overland, make sure you follow uh, Expedition Overland below in the notes. We got all the links. Where is this trip taking place? So this is the Nordic series. We're going, uh, our trucks landed in Belgium yesterday. And we're going to Norway, Finland, into Sweden, drop back into Denmark, and ship over to the Faroe Islands, and then into Iceland for the next two months. Dang, Iceland. You could fit me inside of your Dometic <laughs> fridge. I think I can get inside. No, it's not Dometic. You can make it. Is it yeah. Dometic? Oh, we got a couple of those. Okay, cool, Dometic. <laughs> Kyle, too, I know you've done this for a very long time, and you grew up in this, but you're offering people the adventure in Kalispell, Montana. What does you, what does your business do, and then what does it provide for the the end user? I'm taking people out doing guided tours, guided trips on snow bikes, and if you don't know what a snow bike is, go look it up because it's not a fat tire bike with you know pedaling. This is a dirt bike with a track on the back and a ski on the front, and it is damn near the coolest thing you can do in your life. And what's so fun is taking guys out and watching them just smile all day and just being like, this is the best thing I've ever done in my <laughs> life. Like I hear that time and time again. And so I hope to do more of that for veterans and getting them out there, like you said, clearing your head and just being mm -hmm. able to experience this brotherhood and camaraderie. So I appreciate the opportunity, Mike, and, and hopefully we get a, get a lot of vets out this next couple of years, you know, and get them out there and get some throttle therapy. The, the coolest thing about all this stuff is community. Yeah. It's bringing people together. There's only a, a, only a few things in this world that still bring people together. That's family, that's church, <laughs> clubs and organizations. But there's not many things that we agree upon. So I think that's the best thing that you get is that kind of community therapy. And I'm, I'm pumped about it. And you're just going to see epic content. So I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. Everybody's links are below. Uh, make sure you guys follow everybody and uh, stay tuned because it's gonna be even more epic. So thanks guys.